that uh, CDC guidelines are only that, guidelines, and they should not be, um, or they are not enforcing them. That is troubling for all of us. So we wanna make sure that uh, if you are a parent or a student that you are pushing back on that because CDC guidelines are like the holy grail of guidelines in the world. Everyone is following them. Nobody's saying, you know, uh, it's CDC guidelines, we're not following because it's only guidelines. They, everyone is following around the world. Um, and last but not least, we had our arbitration, which many of you heard, and we will be sharing, I will be sharing the link in a minute. Um, but so we had the arbitration decision and mainly just so you guys know the arbitration, I was personally not expecting something different from an arbitrator uh, was reading the, the, the print, the fine print, specifically an article or, or a section, which is number 13, in which it was established that the school board had the ability of bringing back teachers into the classroom based on the uh, operational needs of the schools. Um, so that's what they did. And the arbitrator actually was, I would say, fair game with that. Uh, but we also heard the other part of the arbitration decision, which was that um, the superintendent and the school board have 30 days to turn the data and the information that the BTU requested to them um, uh, in order to know how the decisions were made. Meaning that if any teacher who's hearing tonight that their accommodation was made with, um, with no reason, uh, you could actually contact your principal, you could contact the BTU, give them your information, and the school district should be given a reason, uh, a writing statement reason of why you were not accommodated this time. That is a big win because before, and even right now, I'm pushing back with my, for example, with my principal in my school, and he's just, today he denied to give me the information again, and he told me that I have to go into public record, uh, which I will do. Um, just so you guys know, I've been waiting 24 days for a public record uh, for some really basic information about the students' return numbers. Um, the other people get, I don't know why a parent like me cannot get as easy as other people, but I'm still waiting. And I called the school district today and I sent emails again today. Um, so the arbitration is that. Um, I guess it's, I will say that it, it, I'm, a, I'm a former soccer player, I will say it's a tie. So it's like everyone got a goal, everyone got something from it. Um, but we have to keep the pressure. Uh, some of us were um, at the school board building a couple of days ago, many of you saw it. Um, and you, uh, you saw that we were just supporting our teachers again, making sure that people know that they the, the health of our teachers matter. Rocco Diaz was there, Nancy Fry was there, um, and many others uh, from BTU also, we were having people. So with that, I'm gonna close. That's just to give some context for people who just joined in tonight while we're doing these meetings. Um, we're gonna have a mix uh, of, 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 of things tonight. So I'm gonna share my screen and then we will start, I'm sorry, we would start with, um, with our elected officials. So I don't know, Nancy, you wanna help me? Oh, Nancy was biting a cookie. Sorry, I don't wanna put you in this spot. It was a waffle, not a cookie. <laughs> okay. Um, um, I think we have a few more people that are gonna be joining in a couple minutes. So I'll wait to do the introductions if that's okay. Okay, so we're gonna wait for a minute before we do elected officials. Cause I know Debbie has to go. <laughs> so Debbie, you wanna go first. Uh, I know you cannot discuss, everyone knows this, but if you are new to the meetings, uh, the board member cannot discuss anything that will be discussed at any of the board meetings. So she is just here to listen and also just to share her views of what's going on. Welcome uh, board member Hicks and thank you for being here again with us. We appreciate it a lot. Good evening. Thank you for inviting me and um, thank you for all of the the parents and community members and teachers um, that are on the call that want to just um, share their concerns and hope have a call to action on how we can move forward together to make sure that we're all achieving the same goal that I believe we all have and that is to make sure that we're educating our students to the best of our ability. So, um, you know, as you mentioned, arbitration is over. So what I would really like to hear from and whether I hear it or you let me know later since I have to go early, is what 
do the teachers need that have gone back into the building need to be safe? If they don't have things, the, that's what we need to know now. You know, what is it? Do, do you want shields to go up? Do you need more PPE? Um, if if we're not, if the CDC guidelines are not being followed, please reach out because the intention is that that will continue to happen and that we will continue to make sure that the spaces are cleaned and safe so that um, we, we don't have an outbreak of, of any issues. So that's really what I'm hoping to get from this evening. I know that um, it's kind of been an us against them and I hope that we can please, um, you know, try to, to resolve this and try to move forward. I am so appreciative and grateful for everything that teachers and parents have done since last March. So almost the last year, I know that um, every time somebody's asked something of you, you've just done it. And I know it feels as if you're maybe not valued, but I wanna tell you that I value you. I'm grateful. I want to make it the best situation that it can be. So please share how we can move forward together and that it's a partnership. It's not an us against them. So that's my, um, that's my hope from this evening. So thank you again for, for having this and for coming and just continue to reach out when you see things that aren't right so that we can make sure that we write them. Thanks. Perfect. So I'm going to let maybe Nancy, while I sent this email really quick, uh, drive the conversation for now um, after I show the agenda. So this is what we have today. We have elected officials like Ms. Hickson that will be sharing um, kind of like their perspective as she did and also taking notes. We have um, a couple of them that are here already and some, some of them will come as we know Tallahassee is in session so some of them will be just joining for a minute and sharing and leave. Um, we have our Congre Congresswoman's office, uh, Debbie Washington Schultz office also here so they will be also listening and they will be just kind of sharing uh, a little bit. Um, they don't have a presentation, but they will be sharing uh, what, what they think about this at the federal level. And then we're gonna just have testimonials, part one, like we did before. We're gonna listen to a couple of teachers or community members that want to share. And let's focus on how we, like Ms. Hickson mentioned, how we could work this out and what do you need as a teacher if you're a teacher or what do you need if you're a parent to feel more comfortable to bring your kids back or your kid back into the classroom. Then after that, we're gonna have a section called Let's Advocate. We're gonna walk through the websites of how to find your elected officials. For some of you don't know how to do that. Uh, we're gonna find your school board members, how to email them, where their phone numbers, where the email addresses, um, and how to send your public comment, which is really important. As we know, public comment has been limited to a specific time for general public comment, but also for specific items. Uh, we know a lot of the teachers that are here tonight or many parents cannot attend those as we don't know when the meeting is gonna finish. Uh, we don't know when the public comment could be actually happening during the day is really tricky before it used to be at the beginning of the meeting. Now it's like whenever they finish. Um, so it is really important that you know and you learn how to send public comment through uh, the Google form that they set up for the public. So we're gonna show you that. Then we're gonna have testimonials part two, another number of individuals from the community sharing again. And then we're gonna have um, kind of like an action item that Nancy came up with uh, this, this evening, which is really making, we want to make a video of everyone's story. So we want to, uh, for you to submit a really snip and she's going to tell us how to do that. Uh, and then we're gonna put all these comments or all these stories together and we're gonna send that to the board, uh, to the school board and the superintendent so they can listen to everyone's uh, kind of like experiences uh, really quick on less than a minute. That's gonna be challenging, but that's what we have to do to grab their attention. All right, Nancy, so you wanna take it over from here. We're gonna go with elected officials. All right, and I already see our other school board member present tonight, Nora Rupert uh, has her hand up, so let's have her speak next. I was gonna call on her anyways, but she raised her hand too. So take it away, Ms. Rupert. Hi, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, sorry, I'm losing my voice really, um, really quickly. Um, but I wanted to thank you so much for uh, inviting me once again. And um, I like I like your idea, Nancy, about the um, 
the short clips because that's what we want to see and hear. We we want to we need to know um, what the experiences are going on with our parents, with our students, with our staff. Because if we we don't um, get into the schools with COVID, it's a lot more difficult for me. And um, I I have a tremendous amount of of um, difficulty trying to do my job where I cannot interact with people like we all want to do. So um, you having well, you putting together um, some snip and clip it's, clippings of everything will be absolutely wonderful, and I look forward to that. But um, also, I, I heard Miss uh, Dixon. I can't say you know comment really what else that she was saying, but um, I did like her idea about hearing you know, specific things that we wanted to, um, to hear about. What I want to tell you is that everybody's been pushing for the vaccines. I know that we're all scared. Um, there is a delay. Um, I'm looking forward to hearing maybe from um, Congressman um, Wasserman Schultz to see what the federal um, people can do for us because um, I, she, she's a real go-getter and, and I know that she'll be able to help us. Um, I also would love to hear from any parents that are seeing best practices at your school. I mean, we all hear about the, the situations that are, are tough and that aren't, aren't exactly the best at the moment, but there are beautiful uh, little nuggets out there and it would be great to highlight just some of them so we could share uh, with downtown and the academics and you know Mr. Runcy and say, listen, this school, this particular teacher, they're doing this and it's successful. They're moving their students. Um, I, and I think that that would help. And I also liked where um, Debbie, Ms. Hickson said, it's really not us against anybody. Um, I think at this point, we really just need to, to work together and um, try our best. I mean, I, I personally think at this time, we should be kinder to each other. Um, and, and really, um, you know, reach out as much as we possibly can. But I'm going to be on for a little bit and I'll be listening and you can always email me. I'm sure that the information is going to be put up um, to be able to reach us. But please call me. Um, I answer my phone. I call you back. I'll meet you for coffee, socially distanced, and uh, we can get together and, and, and really make some improvement. Um, because it's going to be a little bit longer than we all would have liked to still be going through this. But um, thank you all for standing up. You know, that's how I got involved and got on the board was being an advocate for my children first. And when you do that and you bring your stories, there is nothing better than that because that is authenticity. All right. Love everyone. And um, hope to talk to talk to you all soon. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we're very happy that uh, you've joined us tonight. We really appreciate it. Um, so next, why don't I have uh, Commissioner Sabrina Javiana, if you want to speak for a minute. Hi, Nancy. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much um, for having me and for hosting this meeting and being relentless about advocating for our schools, teachers, parents, ESPs. Uh, so I'm part of a group of local elected officials, uh, city commissioners, mayors, vice mayors. We are actively uh, sending letters and emails and messages to the superintendent on, uh, on behalf of our teachers, supporting those who would like to uh, continue to have work from home accommodations. Uh, we're passing resolutions in our cities advocating for the county and the state to prioritize teachers and support staff uh, when it comes to vaccinations. Uh, so we're, we're here to listen. Um, if you have anything, any concerns, anything you're hearing about in your cities, uh, we're spread out all over the county from Coral Springs, Oakland Park, Hollywood, Hollandale. Uh, we're here to listen to you. So um, I'll put my contact information in the chat. I'd love to stay in contact with you all and I'll be listening tonight. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sabrina. And um, yeah, so everyone just keep an eye on the chat for her contact information and we can also send it out afterwards. Um, next, let me go through. It looks like uh, we have Andrew Dolberg here from uh, Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz office. Andrew, if you'd like to speak. Sure, um, Nancy and, and everyone who uh, put this together and, and John Moreno, thank you so much for welcoming us here tonight. 
Uh, I'm here along with my colleague Vivian Parecci um, from Congressman Washington Schultz's office. And we're really just here to listen. Um, we've been in touch with a lot of teachers, school board members, um, with uh, the union as well, and, and of course, parents and students. And we really wanna make sure that we are focused on solutions, make sure that teachers and students stay safe, um, that parents are in a, in a situation that works for them. And so we will continue to advocate for every possible solution at the federal and state level. Um, and a lot of that does begin with accelerating the vaccination process. Um, we will be working with the uh, Biden administration and with congressional committees to ensure that the vaccination process is as, as accelerated as possible and, and Florida is getting the vaccines that it should. Um, and hopefully that puts us on track to return to uh, at least a high level of normalcy in the next few months here. So we're keeping our, our chins high and, and uh, we have high hopes that that's the trajectory that we're on. So thank you all so much for having us tonight. And we look forward to taking notes and bringing all that back to the Congresswoman. And uh, Vivian, did you want to say anything as well? Hi, sorry, Nancy. I'm, uh, I was just floating between uh, one meeting and another. Uh, Dr. Fauci is having a town hall meeting this evening and Healthcare is one of our priorities, obviously. Just to echo exactly what Andrew said, um, we are working with um, our federal partners and our community stakeholders to ensure that um, the vaccine is distributed um, at, at a greater pace than it's being distributed right now. She is keeping tabs on um, uh, our community stakeholders, our, our hospital systems and, and other groups um, that are responsible for uh, distributing the vaccine and hoping that, again, we can ensure, sorry, someone came in, in ensuring that uh, the process is smoother. And obviously, um, please feel free to reach out to us at any point um, if you have any concerns and because uh, we're here to help. Awesome, Vivi, and thank you, thank you so much because you always, 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 um, you know, come into the meetings with the community, and you always an advocate for everyone. So I appreciate that you um, always have your cell phone handy, your email. You always reply. You always get back to us in any other issues that have been involved. You always get back to us. So I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right, so we are going to move to the next part. Uh, do we have any more elected officials, Nancy, so far? Not at this time, but as they come in, I'll let you know. Perfect. So we will have that. Uh, all right. So we have already a list of speakers. They, they, they raise their hand. Some of you don't have your emoji working, um, but make sure I, I, I'm going to make sure that uh, you guys get into the list. Um, and I am going to start with Rocco Diaz. Rocco. Thank you. My name is Rocco Diaz. I'm a senior at Fort Lauderdale High School. And I wanted to start by drawing attention to Florida House Bill 1, which recently got through the Criminal Justice Committee and includes harsher, pen harsher pen penalties for actions that occur during protests. And we have to continue to advocate against this because we need to encourage protest. It's a main part of how we're going to get teachers the support we need. And the last thing we need is another measure discouraging it. And also, in December, there was also a proposal by the school board to place limits on public comments. And recently, they ended a meeting early with maybe the intent to uh, with maybe the intent to prevent people from getting there on time to speak in public about the teacher accommodations. And this was the only meeting where they would have a chance to speak about this in the near future. So, what's the common thread here? We have two organizations that would rather silence those speaking out about certain issues than address these issues in the first place. And also, I wanted to tell a story that I haven't told in a while. Back in November, I contracted uh, COVID-19. And during that period, I attended school in person, even though I stopped attending school as soon as I found out I may have come in contact with the virus. However, I have no idea how long my incubation period was. And I could have been at school with the virus and I could have been standing face to face with my teachers 
as they opened the door for me while I had the virus. And I don't care what the chance of transmission in school, what the chance of transmission of the virus in schools in. I know if I had the virus or if I were a teacher standing face to face with a kid who had the virus, I wouldn't want to be face to face with them and I wouldn't even want to be in the same room as them. So previously, I proposed to the district that they not force teachers back and instead do a teacher survey asking whether they want to come back. Now I've acknowledged to them that I don't think it's as necessary just because we have the vaccine available. However, 4,000 accommodations denied is way too much. And there should be no reason to de deny any ADA accommodation. And remember, these denials of ADA accommodations have been going on long before we heard about the arbitration and this recent incident. They've been going on for the past four years. And we must make an effort to encourage the district to accept them, especially due to the low rates of families even having the confidence to send their kids to school. And because there is no excuse to gamble with people's health. There's no excuse to gamble with people's lives. And I won't rest until I don't hear another story of a teacher having to risk their life in our schools. Now, I know we wanna work with the district. However, in order for us to work with the district, we have to have receipts of the district listening to us and taking our feedback into account. So all I have to say is keep on fighting and I'll be right there with you. Thank you, Rocco. And uh, Rocco has been in every meeting, in every action, um, planning more stuff. So thank you, Rocco, for being with us since the beginning. And you being in a long haul, I know that because uh, we see you every every meeting. Um, the 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 board member uh, Rupert just ask uh, if somebody uh, any of the parents joining or any parent teacher is joining tonight, he has any answers to 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 the uh, board member. She's asking about the services through EIP or 504 plans. Um, and I know Lindsay is next and she's raising her hand. And I believe you're part of that group. Um, so she could actually comment about that. Uh, so I'm going to let her go. So Lindsay, welcome and you have your time. Hi, thank you. So Ms. Rupert, um, you're not my board member, so I don't really know too much about you other than what you've been saying on these meetings. And I just want to sincerely thank you for coming. Um, you mentioned, I think it was last meeting, that you are an adoptive mother and that your children fell under the ESC window. Um, I took that to heart. I'm also an adoptive mother and my daughter also falls under the ESC window. Um, she was actually just the recipient of the e-learning and excellence award from BCPS, the ESC division. So she won for pre-K and she got to do the virtual ceremony and it just made this huge world of difference to her. Um, she is receiving all of her services virtually um, through her public school in Coral Springs. Um, that was part of what I wanted to express. Um, I understand firsthand the frustration with everything. I'm not a teacher, I'm a parent. Um, school is difficult for my child right now under the circumstances, but she's trying her best. And I think it was kind and it was wonderful to have that award ceremony to honor these children for doing their best. And it really inspired her um, to keep working harder today. It was like a whole new day today after that ceremony. Um, again, I'm not a teacher, I'm a parent. Um, and I admire and I understand what everyone's saying that, you know, there are negatives and there are positives and we should focus more on the positive. But I have my phone blowing up right now from friends who are teachers and teachers at my children's school who are afraid to speak because they feel like they're being under a microscope. Um, and one of them notated that it's hard. It's hard to just look for things that are going right when you're so worried about your health. And also as parents that your children are in those classes. And there are classes with 20 students, um, some kindergarten classes with 17, 18 kids and an aide. Um, and that's what's going on. And they're telling people and it's not being heard and they're scared. And sometimes their children are in those classes. Um, so I think as a parent, it just breaks my heart. I know I'm privileged. I get to keep my children learning home. My daughter is receiving her services virtually. Um, but I guess I just want to make sure that I can't imagine the terror 
in what our teachers are facing, especially as parents. I have had a child who has passed away. Um, so perhaps that's just a little bit more real to me, what's at stake. And the fact that our teachers go to work every single day and they make magic for our children, even if it's in person, even if it's on a screen. I mean, my daughter who receives her ESE services, what her teacher does, she's like a superhero to her. Um, and I think it breaks my heart as a parent that knowing what's at stake personally, um, to see our children's teachers go through that. And especially you know, when there are parents, teachers are parents and their children that they're worried about too. So I just wanna put that out there and say that teachers have children too, and they don't feel like their voices are necessarily being heard. And now they're sort of afraid to say anything for their jobs too. So I appreciate Ms. Rupert, your communication and your openness throughout this whole thing. Um, you're not, again, you're not my board member, but I felt a connection to you there. You know, we have a lot in common. Um, but I just want to remember to give our teachers empathy. I can't imagine the terror that they're living with. So that's why I will continue to advocate that everyone gets to feel the same kind of comfort I do in keeping my kids safe. That's it. Thank you, Lindsay. <clears throat> Thank you for sharing. Um, I just want to make a, a comment before before we move into Raymond and Raymond, you and Q. So um, you're next. Uh, but we did receive we sent a letter that was signed for many of you. Uh, we sent a letter to all the board members again to invite them to this meeting. Um, we are trying to be as more friendly or like you know formal as possible and not going into these you know protests and trying to have a confrontation uh with with nobody uh but we only receive responses from Ms. Hickson uh Ms. Rupert uh Ms. Oswood and um Ms. Rich Levinson um the rest of the pack um of the group uh Patty Good uh board member Patty Good uh board member Sarah Leonardi which was in our meeting even though she said that the uh, that we should be focusing on the people that are not coming to these hearings. I completely hear her. So maybe that's why she didn't reply. So we let her pass this one, uh, but she's always attentive and she's listening. Um, and, and, and Ms. Um, and Mary uh, and the superintendent, none of them reply. Uh, so we have an issue of communication, not even the acknowledgement of receiving a letter uh, that is not just signed by me, it's signed by many parents, many teachers, many advocates. Um, I think that is the issue to your point, Lindsay. If they aren't listening to us, which we are the ones who are bringing our kids, we're giving our kids to the, to the system kind uh, in some ways, they, they don't reply to their own employees. And it's really sad. And I know Ms. Rupert and other board members are listening, uh, but it is a communication issue, definitely. And I felt, and this, with this, I'm going to share just a little bit of, I, I feel that we are sometimes talking into a hole and there is no, there is nobody at the other end of that hole. It's like we just sending all these messages into a hole that there is nobody at the other side. And, and, and it's really sad to see that. And so when, when the board members ask us what teachers need and what parents need, I, will, I would just say to Ms. Rupert and Ms. Hickson that we need a clear communication channel with our members and with our superintendent and with administrators. There is no communication. Um, some of them are great and maybe we're gonna hear some stories today of some great uh, principals and some great administrators, but the reality is that this is just, this just really is getting out of hand and and the only thing that I could tell you, as Roko mentioned, is that we need to fight back with what we have, with our voices, calling, emailing. We're going to learn a little bit of that tonight because that is pure advocacy and we have to do it. The 44 people that are here plus the 700 people that we have in our mailing list, if we all send an email to all our representatives, to all our school board members, believe me, they will move. They will move at least to get back to us and say, I received your communication. That is the, ch the challenge that we have. All right, so we have next uh, our intrepid leader, <laughs> an amazing student leader as well, Raymond. Uh, Raymond, welcome. Thank you, John. 
Um, good evening, everybody. Again, uh, my name is Raymond, uh, Raymond Adderley. Um, I'm from Fort Lauderdale High School too, like Rocco. I currently serve as the class president of the junior class there. Um, I'm also a pretty influential person on campus, I'd like to say, is I tend to be a more leading voice uh, alongside Rocco. Um, we work a lot together on solving these issues and making sure that not only our students are advocated for, but teachers and administrators and our ESC students and everybody. Lindsay, I, I just wanna say to you that your story is incredibly moving. Um, I'm so happy that uh, your child within all this is getting the education that she deserves. And most importantly, as she should. Um, there shouldn't be any discrepancy there. And I, I'm, I'm glad to know that there are teachers out there that are still doing the work that is so necessary during these uh, perilous times. And I'm so sorry to hear that you lost a, um, a child. Um, you know, I lost my father at a very young age um, to gun violence. Um, and it was rough for me, but through it all, I've overcome it. And it's led me to be uh, the advocate that I am today for so many people. Um, going forward, I'll tell you a little bit about what I've done and 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 I'll respond to Ms. Rupert and to Ms. Hickson who want to know what, what teachers want um, as well as what students want because I've been having those conversations. Uh, first of all, um, I did help uh, John and, and Rocco and, 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 and Miss Fry and everyone who was at the flash mob. I tried my best to help in, in planning that and executing that event. Although I could not be there, I was doing student things like taking the PSAT, but my heart was there with you all. And for everyone who was there, thank you so much for being there. Um, I continue to have conversations with different board members um, and different commissioners and different, you know, state representatives to ensure that our teachers are vaccinated. Um, I think from the last community meeting, uh, Catherine, uh, uh, I can't remember her last name, I think it was to St. Jen or something like that. I remember her saying this quote and it was so moving to me uh, when she said, I, I don't want to leave my, my daughter, uh, my daughter without a mom or my husband a widower. She went on to say, you can pack 50 kids in my classroom for now and I'll teach them at home. But as soon as I'm fully vaccinated, I'll be the first one in the parking lot. It's stuck with me. Um, and it's really been why I haven't given up on this fight. So I continue to advocate for teachers. But what teachers want, Miss um, Rupert, uh, Miss Hickson, uh, Commissioner Javiana, from the conversation, teachers want to be heard they want to have a seat at the table to make the decisions that impact their lives, but not just their lives, but the lives of their students. Um, they want to know that they're heard. I was having a conversation with my senior, well, my Naval Science instructor today, which is the equivalent to a instructor for JRRTC, but the Navy branch. And he said, look, uh, you know, I'm going to end up going to Winter Park in Orlando and teach there because this school district doesn't give an F about me, is what he said to me. They don't care about me. They don't wanna hear my voice. They forced me here. They can't guarantee that I'm going to be safe in my own classroom. And it was awful, it was horrible to hear that. And I said, chief, look, I hear you, man. And I'm so sorry. And it's really sad and uh, Ms. Ruppert and Ms. Hickson, thank you for your advocacy on the board, but really the fight is not over until all of us join it together. And once we all fight back, like John said, like Rocco said, they're gonna listen. You put the pressure on those um, in leadership and they act. I was having a conversation with my cadet staff today and you know we had a problem and I told them, leaders are to be held accountable and to be critiqued more than they are to be complimented. And that is how we need to hold accountable our superintendent and board members who are complacent and not acting on behalf of our teachers, board members who aren't doing enough to advocate for teachers getting vaccines, people who have become complacent with the status quo. We need to fight back against those folks. And, 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 and the bottom line is this, I say this every meeting, my mother is a teacher and if she feels uncomfortable in her classroom, and she's a healthy woman, I can only imagine the fear and the horror of, of the teacher or the parent 
or the student whose parents have sicknesses at home. And I, I just can't imagine the feeling of a child that you know knowingly knows that their parent has diabetes but is forced to go back to school and the pain and the fear that that child has, it, it's an awful feeling to rest. It keeps me up at night and it should keep the school board members up at night too. But most importantly, I want you to know parents and teachers that I hear you. I continue to advocate for you. I'm not going anywhere. John isn't going anywhere. Rocco isn't going anywhere. We're gonna keep sticking it to the man <laughs> and we are, we're gonna do it together. And so thank you for being in this fight and as I tell my cadets all the time, damn the torpedoes, don't give up the ship. Awesome, man. Can't believe you're 16, brother. Can't believe you, 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 you are so articulated. You, you definitely have a gift. And we are so happy to have you in these meetings. And we, have, uh, we are so blessed to have you and Rocco you know, uh, advocating for the students and for the community and for the teachers. So thank you for your words. But we're gonna get into what you know, what we need to do, because getting into meeting after meeting after meeting, it's beautiful, and you know we we are uh, all with our hearts in our hands, and you know, uh, crying some of the times that we've been here, hearing testimonial after testimonial, um, so many of the really heartbreaking stories that we have in our community. But tonight we wanted to make something different, which is. We want to show some of you what is the things that you could do today, today, when you go to sleep or tomorrow when you wake up and you could make a difference by doing these things. So I just want to uh, do a, a little bit of a, uh, of a pulling right now. Um, how many of you know all your elected officials? If you know all your elected officials, type up one on the chat, number one on the chat. Number one, if you know all your elected officials, let's say your, your keyboard is not working either. <laughs> all right, that's great. A lot of you do, a lot of you do. How many of you know, uh, I'm going to improve. <laughs> uh, how many of you know uh, you're a school board member? Who is your school board member? All right, press the uh, type of one if you know. If you know who's your school board member. You should know at least who's your president and your vice president uh, <laughs> at this point. Um, awesome. And um, some of you know that the school board of Broward County it has two at large board members. One of, of those at large members is here with us today. It's um, Ms. Debbie Hickson, which was elected in the last election. And then we have another one, which is Donna Corn, which is also at large. And then we have um, a specific a school board members by district. And why is that important? Because Donna Corn and Ms. Hickson represent all of us because they are large, meaning the whole county. And so they are your school board member also. So if you're in district seven, in district five, or in district three, for example, district five is, um, Sarah Leonardi, if you are one of, uh, if that's your board member, then you also have two a large board members that you should be reaching out to, right? So uh, some of you might didn't, may, maybe didn't know that, but that is important to just before I start with what we want to, the exercise that we want to go through today. Um, all right. All right. So um, if you don't know your elected official, there's a lot of platforms you could Google it. This is one that I use. Uh, you could put your address here um, and you hit submit. And then it's gonna give you all your elected officials from the president all the way to some good and bad senators, <laughs> some good and bad uh, representatives, your governor, your state legislator, Amen to that. Who said that? I'm sorry. Can you hear me? That was Pierpont. I'm sorry. I'm just letting you know I agree with you 10,000%. Awesome. Awesome. I'm, I'm glad that you agree. If you don't agree, it's fine. We're here to, to, to talk. Uh, then you have your representatives 
um, and your local elected officials. That is important because as we keep having these conversations about you know, the vaccinations, a lot of that decision is not made through the school board and they don't have control uh, besides sending a letter, advocating, they don't have control of that. So you want to know who's your state representative, who's your um, state senator. In my case is Lauren Book and then Dan Bailey, which maybe connects tonight. Uh, he was in, 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 in a session at Tallahassee where he said that he might be connecting, but you should know this and they have their Facebook page. If you could just copy page, you could go to them. So I encourage all of you to do this if you haven't done it in the past. And I know I'm going for some of you that are like hardcore advocates into the basics, but I think that is important for everyone. Now, <clears throat> let me just go back to this one. Okay. So this is our, this is our Broward County Public Schools page. This is it, BrowardSchools.com, right? Uh, this is the main page. And what I'm gonna show you right now, it's, a, it's three things, they're really basic. The first one is uh, the school board right here, you have it. If you want to go, which is something that I will ask Ms. Rupert and Ms. Hickson if they could fix it. When we have meetings, everyone has to go through different clicks. You have to go here, meeting agendas and watch live meetings. Then when you go there, then you could find the meeting. If it's happening, it says in progress and it will be right here. I feel that it should be in the forefront of the page right here, the banner with the live board, me board, board meeting or the, or, or, of the, of the workshop, but that's another conversation. So if you want to know who's your, you already know who's your board member. And if you don't know, I will, I will show you in a minute. It's really complicated. Uh, and if you know any shortcuts, that's why we here. And you click on meet the board. And this is what I'm encouraging. We are encouraging uh, Nancy, Lindsay, the rest of the, of the people who has been advocating um, for the last couple of weeks is that we need you to take action. And the way that you take action is you call these people. For example, my school board member is, or oh, district five, so, so sorry. So Sarah's district three, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. So district three is Sarah, so I apologize. So my, my, my school board member will be uh, Dr. Oswood. And right here, if you click on it, you find his, her information, including her cell phone, which is public. We pay for that cell phone. <laughs> she should be answering your texts. She should be answering your calls. So right here, you have her phone number. If you wanna send her a fax. If you want to text her or call her. And then you have her email. So right here, you click on it and it will go into your email server if it's Yahoo, if it's Gmail, if whatever service that you have, and it will put the email right there. So you could send her an email and said, this is what's happening in my school. This is what happened with my son. This is what happened with my teacher. This is what happened with my family. This is what I've been here in the community. And again, as Rocco mentioned, we need to put pressure in the school board members. And all of them, all of them. So I extremely, extremely, extremely encourage you tonight to go to the school board website and look for your a school board member. If you don't know, we're gonna see in a minute, but if you do this, it's huge. If they see many people email them, it's huge. Now, if your representative, if your school district, uh, if your board member, I'm sorry, it's in my case, Dr. Oswood, I should be copying Donna Corn because she's at large, countywide, and I should copy Ms. Hickson, countywide, because they also represent me, right? They are large. So make sure that you are texting, calling, emailing. If you get, look, I've been getting emails every other day or every day about teachers or people who attend the meetings. Tell me stories that I don't know what to reply. I always like go talk to your board member. And some of them say they don't reply to me. They don't get back to me. What else I could do? The next thing is you have their cell phone, their district phone, their district cell phone. This is something they should be answering because the point of pain with our tax dollars, their cell phones is so they could get back to us faster than an email or a phone call in their office. So my invitation tonight is to do 
a little bit of advocacy this way because it's going to make a difference. Last thing I'm gonna show you is, uh, of course, our student advisors. You already know Rocco, which is our superstar. Um, his email is there because he is the student advisor to the school board, but we also have another student advisor, which is Gianna Aleman. And correct me if I'm wrong, Rocco, that's her last name. Um, so make sure that you are also email them because they are students leaders. And as you can see, Rocco is super involved and maybe Gianna has another way of getting involved, but you know, we want them also to listen from parents and teachers, right? And if you are concerned about being tracked and your name put on, and, and right now I could tell you, if you want to email the superintendent, I will put the email on the chat because he has his email too. You can email the superintendent. Now, if you want to just send a, a large, you know, kind of like email request, you will click here. Oh, sorry, not click here, I apologize. Oh, where is it? Oh, the link could just disappear. One minute, let me see where it is. Um, oh, here you go. I can see the I can see the page. I apologize. So, if you want to email the whole school board, then you click here. It says email the whole school board, and voila, all the, the school board members receive the email, all of them, in one email. I will, of course, encourage you to give them a call, send them a text send an email individually, because maybe this is, and I don't know, Ms. Rupert or Ms. Hickson, if you guys could share where this email address goes, if it goes into everyone's inboxes or it goes into a general email that's get distributed to all the board members. But I imagine this is a, the is a, a email merge where all the emails of the school board members are just in sync with this email and they go to all of them. So this is really simple stuff that we should be able to do guys as to advocate for the rights of our teachers and for the rights of our students and our parents in our community at large. Last thing, this is the, the page for mapping. I can share the link in a minute. Countywide, this is kind of like the distribution. And right here you have the at large, then you have the districts, then you have the combination of schools. So if your son goes into Diller, 612, you know who's your district, it's five, so you know who to talk to. Most likely where you live is your same district where your son goes to school or your daughter, but maybe not because some of us have school choice. So maybe you live in Tamarack, but your son goes to plantation, a plantation school or, or any of those. So you're, you're a school board member, it's you know in another location, but your, your, your school where your son goes to school is in a different location, that makes sense? So you have to just be attentive or where you go, where your son or your daughter goes to school and make sure that you look at the districts and it's disseminated by elementary school, middle school, high school. And if any of your family members go to centers or technical colleges, because we, we have those. And then if your son or daughter goes to charter school, they are part of the school district also, they're here, they're all listed. They're all listed here. This is really important. I know it might sound so, so basic, but this is the first step to do any advocacy right now. They're not listening. Some of them are not attending our meetings. Well, now we're gonna get and bring to their attention. We're gonna email them, we're gonna text them. I've been texting Ms. Oswood. I've been texting Ms. Good. I've been texting Ms. Rupert for sure. Um, uh, Ms. Hickson, I bother her through Facebook, but I'm in contact with the board members because they have to know what's going on. So, and Ms. Leonardi. So this is one of the tools that we could use. Now to finish, cause I know we're gonna move into other comments and other, uh, other people that want to talk about what's going on. Uh, also, if you want to know the districts, if you're not sure who is your school board member, this is it right here, right? Where is your, where, where do you leave? I know these boundaries are crazy. <laughs> like I know yesterday I was with my son going to a park and it was closed and we just kind of like got into the park because we thought it was a sunrise, city of sunrise park and all the city of sunrise parks are open starting Monday, but it was a plantation park. 
And we were like, and the guy came and kicked us out. I was like, what is this Parkinson plantation? He's, yes, but it's literally in the same area of Sunrise. So um, if somebody has a shortcut, because I couldn't find it, how to find your school board member, that would be great. This is different. I will be sharing the links. This is different ways of you finding that. And with the last thing I'm going to leave, so I open, to, I open the floor for comments and for uh, testimonials, it's that we have two things here. One is your public comment. In the main page, you scroll down, you see right there for the February 2nd, which is the next meeting, you open it, there's the date, the agenda items are not there yet, so they should be listed when the agenda gets formalized. Then you put your name, your last name, your home address, email address, and then you put your public comment, which is 400 words. And Rocco, I would love if you, I wanna stop here. If you want to, maybe you know more of this than, than anyone else besides the board members, but what is the protocol when it says public comment and when you comment for items that are in the agenda? How much time do you have? I believe it's five minutes. Can someone correct me if I'm wrong? I'll correct you. Sorry, Rocco, I love you lots and you speak great for everybody, but um, this is Anna Marie Pierpont. I don't know if anybody's ever heard me give public comment, but on a particular item, it's three minutes and that item needs to be identified in your spiel. Public comments, the five o'clock speaker time or the noontime speaker time do not have to adhere to an agenda item. And that is also only three minutes. You can bring someone or have someone send a letter in tandem with your letter saying, um, I'm Sally Smith, a resident of Hollywood, and I would like to donate my time to Anna Marie Pierpont. And if okay. you do that, then it's just six minutes. Right. Thank you. That is, that is a technique a lot of people have. And I have seen you, by the way, and thank you for your, your comments on the, on the meetings. Um, oh, and one more thing. Yes, go ahead. Brooke. If you ever need me to say something about an agenda item, just contact me. Beautiful. Just because I'm not bound by a time limit. Perfect. So we, are, we, we have these limits, right? Three minutes. When it's a, and this is two, two different things for everyone to understand. There is an item on the agenda that you are able to comment on. Let's say they're, they're going to discuss um, and a specific item, this ESC protocols um, or anything like that. Like it happened yesterday on the workshop, uh, two days ago on the workshop or yesterday, time is flying. Um, then you could comment around that, like um, Anne Marie mentioned. You can comment about that, but it has to be around that item. You cannot move to another topic. Like you cannot bring, you know, vaccinations out of the sudden. They're going to shut you down. They're going to stop. Good night. Good night, no I'm sorry, guys. Have a good night. Uh, you, you, you're going to, uh, you need to be on topic. You cannot, they will, the chairman, and he happens all the time. They stop saying to people, this is not around this item. You have to stop talking. Let's go back into the item. Or they just cancel your time. They'll tell you, I'm sorry, but you know, next person. So you have to be on point. Now for general public comment, it's different. You could actually, there's only 30 minutes allocated for this. What I heard is there's three minutes per person. And what they want to is to at least have 10 people doing public comment, which is extremely, extremely undemocratic and un unclear for me why we're doing that. And also we're doing it at the end. And so if you see on the agendas, if you get to review any of the agendas in the future, you're going to see that it says at 5 p.m. or before, if the meeting resumes before 5. So meaning that last meeting, like what Rocco was mentioning, the meeting finished at around 3 p.m. I was planning to go. I know there was other people planning to go. We couldn't make it because we didn't know it will finish at 3. We were planning to get there at 4, 4.30 to do public comment at 5. So that is an issue. I know some of the board members that are here tonight know about that. And and John, just to bring it up, not, not because I have experience with this, but I have experience with speaking at board meetings. Um, as the chair changes, the rules change. And I don't believe that's 
equitable, but it's my observation. And I think that the having one school board regular meeting per month where we used to have more is also continuing to limit your freedom of speech in a public platform. And I believe that should also be addressed with Chairperson Dr. Osgood. Yep, that's correct. And, and I'm offering, if any of you as a teacher, because now we're having this issue, which is becoming more than an issue. Um, if, if any of you are a teacher today and you want to send something to me to share with any board member or any, or, or any meeting, please use me as a way to get to that. Because I could send an email with your comments saying that it's anonymous, no names, no attachments. Make sure that they get it because a lot of you, a lot of teachers now, and that's why we have 50 people and not 500, is that a lot of people got shut down because people within the district are saying to them, don't participate, don't get involved. There's gonna be retaliation. Um, and, and I just find that an issue. So I'm, I'm gonna put my email. You could email me, say, John, I want you to share this with this board member or with whoever, and I will make my, you know, my word is into that. I will share that, that with the person that's supposed to get it. Um, and I know Rocco will do the same as he mentioned before and many other people here. So if you want to uh, email us, please feel free to do so. You know, I don't have an issue with sharing that information or what retaliation they could do to me. <laughs> I don't know, they might. Uh, <laughs> Uh, last thing, and I know, Rod, you have your hand up, and, and I do apologize that I have you and, um, and Leslie Minder too. Last thing I wanted to show you, it's the, the, um, the dashboard for COVID cases. Um, we have some issues with data, like we have been having issues with Mr. Governor about data sharing. Same thing here. It took a while to upload all the data for the last two months, but they did a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I don't know why we don't have a dashboard for attendance. It would be nice to have a dashboard for attendance so we all know how many kids are going to our schools in person or online. Another idea for our school board members as a parent, we'll love to see a dashboard for attendance. It will help us a lot to make decisions. Uh, if we compare attendance to COVID cases, maybe people will feel more, safety to, more safe to bring their kids at, at schools. But here, really simple. You can see the numbers on the left-hand side. You see the total of numbers of COVID cases up to date, up to, well, this is up to October 9. So it's not updated. Uh, oh, no, no, no. This is up to date, but it started, they started tracking it in October. Um, 2,000 cases, students 1,000, employees 1,000. In the last 30 days, 738 cases of positive cases in the district. 340 are students. 398 employees. Um, and then you could go to your school. So you could, you know, you could go here. And I'm sorry, I'm going to just minimize this here. You could go here. I was actually checking yesterday and we have Cooper City High with 25 cases, but I don't want to put the schools in the spot. I'm just going to put my school. I know the principal at this point, I'm using his name for everything. So they're great people, but it's my school. So I'm going to use it. So Grace Elementary, we have 12 cases. The beauty of this, you could segregate this data by month, I mean, by, by employee, contractor, employee, or student, um, or you could do it by month. So if you are making a decision or if you want to have more information, this is a great tool to use. Please use it because this also will help you to make decisions about bringing your students back, your kids back. If that is your decision, uh, we're not here saying don't bring your students back, just saying, if you want to bring your students back, there should be some basic stuff happening. The first one, it's clear conversations and communications about what is happening in the classroom, social distancing, PPP, all these beautiful things that we know about that should be in place. Uh, we should know how many of our teachers in our schools, like myself, I wanna know how many of those students were uh, you know, um, accommodated and why they were not accommodated if they were at the beginning or if we have none of them accommodated what happens. I don't want my son to go to school and be in front of us a, a teacher that is a high risk. So we should have access to those names of those teachers that are high risk and make sure that maybe they just have the less number of kids. Um, so 
with that, I'm going to stop a lot of things to share. I know you guys have your hands up. I hope this walk through the website, this walk through how to do advocacy, this walk through the, uh, the uh, how to do public comment, this walk through the, vac the, the COVID-19 dashboard helps you to get more informed and to get more involved. That's what we need right now for all of you to get more involved um, in the best way you could do it. So I'm going to stop sharing. And then I really don't know the order of this. We have a lot of uh, coming right now. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to honor the word of Rod because I was the first person I saw uh, raising the hand. And then I'm going to have uh, Terry from the union um, uh, on cue. So Rod. Hey, John. Hey, everyone. Good evening. Uh, I just want to say, John, thank you for hosting these events. And I know uh, Nancy and Rocco and everybody that's been working hard to put this together and all the flash mobs and everything. Pretty cool stuff to see out there. Everybody's uh, advocating for different things. But at the end, we're, we're all looking for the same results. Um, I kind of touched on it last week. Some of the things that, that I feel that we need to start talking about now and um, it's something um, typical of the school board of being reactive. Um, I think we have to change that whole narrative and start just proactive with everything. Um, I believe we need to be at least 70% vaccinated before we get herd immunity. If I'm wrong, somebody please um, correct me, but that's what I believe. And at this point, I don't see it happening at the beginning of the 21-22 school year. So in the light of proactiveness, I think we need to start discussing this as parents, teachers, uh, school board members. Um, I've, I've spoken to some school board members about this already. I think um, in light of their um, lack of proactiveness, if we don't start now or we don't push them to start now, we're gonna just go into the next year with the same thing that we're going now. Um, this year, for me, my opinion, I don't see anything changing um, as far as um, the way that school's being taught. Um, I don't think it's the teacher's fault, um, it just, it comes from leadership. You know, our leadership is lacking just like it is or it was in the country. Um, we have to do a better job, we all have to keep these forums going to be able to communicate like you guys have been saying. Um, I think there's a lot of parents um, that just don't know a lot of things as well. So I know teachers have problems of reaching parents and that's, that's something we have to figure out too, how to get to the parents. So everybody can understand what's going on. You know, parents in tier one schools, just parents all around. I mean, that's how I got involved by, um, not being happy with the way e-learning was going last year. So I, I'm awake now, so I am not going anywhere. My voice is loud and it's gonna get louder. And I think together, united, I think we can all make a change. Um, you know, we have Rocco and Raymond and all these future leaders. Um, you know, we, we can't do it individually. And, and I've tried that, you know, I've talked and you can't just have one person do it. We have to do it together because otherwise they won't hear a small voice. I, I think when I go and speak or I've spoken in front of the school board, it's just, it's almost like I feel like I'm Charlie Brown, you know, and the teacher. It's like, wah, 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 wah. That's, I think, what I sound like to them. It's just not being heard. So I think we all have to get together and advocate for everyone, you know, for our teachers. You know, it's not fair what's happening to teachers. And it's not fair what's happening to our children. Um, there's not one single person to blame for everything for me, except I think leadership, which stems from, you know, Superintendent Runcy and, you know, some of our school board members that want to play politics, you know, with our children and in, in our lives. So I'm going to stop my rant. And, and I know there's a lot of other people here that want to talk. And, um, and, and just like John said, I, I've been doing it on Facebook a lot. I, I have people reach out to me. A lot of teachers reach out to me that are afraid, you know, that there's going to be backlash. So I've reached out to certain principals, even at my school. Um, you know, they don't want to hear it, but sometimes it's just too bad. It needs to be said. And we all have to speak up for, you know, the voices that can't be heard. Um, and that's it. 
and I'm here to listen for the rest of the night. And hopefully we can just be proactive and move forward and figure out solutions. And instead of um, creating more problems, we need to come up with solutions and just problem solve and just put all of our heads together and come up with a way to make things work for the future. So thank you and have a good night. Thank you, Rod. <clears throat> thank you. And, 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 and I completely agree with you. We have to get together. We already have one thing. We show you where the email, <laughs> where the cell phones are. If, if, if you are upset, if you really are upset as a parent, because I know many teachers are afraid. And if you are an unafraid, unapologetic teacher and you want to go forefront into this advocacy, go and text your school board member. Go and text the person that you think is responsible for what is happening at your school. Just go at it. If you need help, you know, we already have a link tree. Uh, Nancy just posted. You find all the information there. I'm putting my email down. I know Rod or many others might put their emails down for help. Reach out to us, you know, text us, call us. We're going to be your advocates because uh, this just started and, and I love it. Um, I don't like when I don't get to be here because I'm a minority. I'm, it always takes a million of things to do before you get heard as a, as a minority. So I've been getting into my places by it, uh, being annoying. Uh, Terry, you're here with us. Thank you so much. Hola, buenas noches a todos. Buenas noches. And Dory, thank you. Uh, Terry, uh, Dory, you on cue. Can, um, I just want to say thank you to all of you who are putting this together. I am so impressed with the students, with the parents, with this coalition. And I understand how difficult it is because I tried to put together a student teacher parent coalition many years ago at the Dania Library. I had meetings every month and it's hard to keep people going and it's hard to keep people. Well, let's just say that what I learned is you can't make someone else brave. And this is the thing. We have to stick together because the teachers are afraid. All the time we call the board members. And by the way, thank you, Representative Hickson and Representative Korn for being on this call. Because what John is doing, the students are doing, and the parents are doing to bring all the voices together, not just the teachers, is amazing. But, um, you know, we can't make people brave and they do retaliate. And I want to give you an example. I put a couple of things in the, in the chat, but recently we had teachers attempting to advocate for themselves, attempting to say, hey, I am a high risk person. We have an MOU. I'm not supposed to be thrown back into school. And we ended up having to go to court, have an arbitration. And even then at the court, what did they do? They had stopped teachers' Facebook pages and they had pictures of these teachers who were asking to have their accommodations validated. And they had like, oh, look, here's a picture. They weren't, you know, there was a whole family here. So they had to have been, you know, um, not being very careful about COVID. First of all, that's not true. Because if you have a picture with your family, that could be your circle of people. There were pictures from years ago. There were pictures of teachers who were with their child outdoors, you know, caring for their infant child and teaching at the same time. When you have a, a, a system that would actually have the audacity to retaliate by, by having their attorneys stop the teacher's Facebook pages, what, what is that? Did the board members know that was gonna happen? Did they approve it? I have to tell you, I have very good relationships with many of the board members. And a lot of times I feel like they just don't know. And people are lying. Um, I'm telling you this right now. People are lying to them. People are lying to Runzi. People are lying. And President Fusco and I, oh, by the way, I'm the vice president of the union and I'm speaking for myself because only Anna Fusco speaks for the union. So I'm speaking for myself, I'm a parent, I'm a community member and I've been very, very involved in many things. Everything, everything from how to grade students to you know how to lift up, up our voices. But a lot of the board members at the end of the day, after many, many phone calls, the final thing that I get often is, well, I'm not allowed to participate in the day-to-day -day operations of the school. In other words, the thing that I've been calling you about for three months, the thing that I've been giving you evidence about, the things that teachers have been coming forward and putting their neck on the line, you now can't do anything about. Uh, excuse me, let me scratch my head. I don't get that. 
And I understand that someone came around and did an evaluation and told them they weren't allowed to be involved in the school to school daily operations. But you can pick up a phone and call a principal. You can find out what's going on. You can do what the arbitrator just now is going to force principals to do and to have our Runsey to do, which is to have us and give us the information in writing of the calculus that they use to keep teachers from coming back or to keep them coming back or to force them to come back. So these are small things that should be happening and why aren't they happening? I will tell you truthfully, um, sometimes I have felt with the five years that President Fusco and I have been dealing with the board is that it's smoke and mirrors we are playing a game of three card Monty. It's like, okay, where am I gonna hide the, you know, the coin and I'm gonna move my little, you know, um, things around and confuse you. That's how I feel. I apologize to the board members who are here, but that's how I feel. I, I honestly have to tell you, things need to be in writing. Dr. Wanza has to put things in writing to all of us because by the way, she not only represents principals, she represents teachers. Teachers have the right to know what principals are about to do. And if we can clear that up, we can clear a lot of things up because if nothing's in writing, which is what they said in the, um, in the arbitration, if nothing is in writing, how can we hold anybody accountable for anything? We're constantly getting 10 different stories from 10 different people and nobody knows who's lying. And you never get all 10 of them in the same room so that you can find out who is a liar. This is not working. Board members, please know, we've said this to you before. I've said this to you before, people are lying. They're lying to you, they're lying to teachers, they're lying to principals, there's just a lot of lying. Why isn't everything in writing? Why aren't directives in writing? And why don't you guys and Mr. Runsey know exactly what's happening in the schools? Because you don't. And the only way that we're gonna solve anything is to continue to have students and teachers and parents together. They will listen to students, they will listen to parents. Teachers, they will try to shut us down. And teachers mostly are in fear of their jobs. If we can get the parents and the students to continue, we can be an incredible voting block that nobody will change. Nobody will be able to beat us. And that is why they divide and conquer. So thank you for bringing us together because in unity, we always can. Siempre unidos podemos. Thank you, John. Thank you, everyone. Yes, here you go. Fire it up. Always. I'm Cuban, baby. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Gracias, Terry. Thank you for, for, for you sharing and for everything you're doing. Because I know you guys have been in this for, for longer than many, many of us. Um, mm -hmm. I appreciate all the, the fight that you guys have. And more than 10 years fighting together on the executive board of the union and more than five years fighting in the union as you know, the, the, the leadership, right. we don't get straight answers. I'm tired of it. I am so tired of it. And I'm so glad that the arbitrator said, yeah, you have to produce paperwork. You have to produce proof. Finally, someone is going to produce proof. So thank you for all you've done. I know the pressures that you've put on have been helpful to us and let's continue to produce proof. Let's have things in writing. Let's know what's really happening and let's have transparency. Yep, definitely. Awesome. And, uh, and Raymond, calmate, calmate, Raymond. Que los cubanos, que no sé qué, calmate tú. <laughs> calmate tú. No, Raymond. no te calmes. No te calmes. Oye, oye, John, somos cubanos, somos, somos cubanos, ¿ok? <laughs> somos, qué, qué bueno. <laughs> Be careful because Roddy has his Puerto Rican, you know, his Puerto Rican blood and he will jump into this conversation and then everyone will hang up. Uh, uh -oh. With el colombiano, el cubano, el Puerto Rican. I'm going on silent now. <laughs> Thank you, Terry. Thank you again. And um, and if you guys didn't know what we were saying, we're just making fun of Terry saying that she's Kuwana and Raymond is Kuwana too, and I'm Colombian, and Rada has some Puerto Rican on his veins. So <laughs> he's making fun of all this. All right, Dory, you're next. We have to have some fun, even though there's, there's some crazy stuff happening. Uh, Dory, welcome. Hi, I apologize. I took French when I was in high school. It's okay. So, I have no idea what you guys said. Um, I want to um, try to, to remain optimistic, but I, I feel like this is a safe place to also speak honestly. I am burned out. I am going to be retiring at the end of this year. 
because I can't take it anymore. And Terry knows me and Anna Marie knows me. I have given my heart to this profession and I've given my heart to the profession as, as a speaker. I have done every single thing that you put up on your list before, John. I have marched in Tallahassee with my fellow union members and my family. I have sent emails. I have made phone calls. Not just this past year, but for the 33 years I've been an educator in Broward County. They don't listen. And you know what? There's something wrong when you can feel more compassion and empathy from the two amazing young students that we are listening to tonight than you do from the school board members, again, with all due respect to them. I don't feel sincerity from any of them, even the two new ones who I voted for, Deborah Hickson and Sara Leonardi. It's like they've become the school board zombies already. We don't have them hearing us. We don't have them empathizing with us. They have no clue what we're dealing with on a day-to-day. -day. It's got to stop. And this is so much more than just about accommodations for our medically fragile people. It's about the way we are treated in general. You know, I happen to have an amazing principal. I'm not going to say one bad word about him at all. But principals are on annual contract. And they don't have any kind of job protection. They have to answer to a higher power in the chain of command. And right now, the people in the chain of command are telling our principals that you need to basically just get them all back. I just watched when you were showing the school board website. There's a big block that comes across that says, Listen to this um, announcement from Dr. Osgood and Superintendent Runcie about why your children should return to face-to-face. -face. They're inviting the public to send their children into an at-risk environment. There is no way you can hear that message or read that message and believe that the school board has our interest at heart right now in this pandemic. And the dashboard, is so incredibly flawed, I, don't, I can't even begin to tell you. It says on there that it was reporting confirmed cases that have been reported to risk management. That is a very small targeted group of information that's been provided for that dashboard. My school says there are five cases since October. We've had five in the last three days. So that dashboard is so misleading it doesn't tell the, the real big picture of what's going on. The community numbers do, probably more accurately, but that information is just all false. And again, I, I feel defeated. I feel discouraged. Last time I came on this meeting, there were over 500 participants. Today, we've barely broached 40. That's because the teachers, were completely destroyed by the decision of the arbitration. And I'm glad that principals have to put their paperwork together now, but you know what? They're gonna find a way to put the paperwork together to say what they needed to say so that teachers won't be able to stay on remote learning. We lost that, that hearing in the end because most of the teachers are still gonna be asked to come back now there's still a fight to fight with the paperwork. Anne Marie, I see you and if you wanna explain, I, I will be happy to hear what you have to say, but I'm telling you what the teachers feel. And as a steward, I have the, the three people at my school that right now have their leave paperwork ready to submit because they expect that our principal's gonna to have to say to them, they have to come back. Lori, I'm going to butt in real quickly. It's Terry. First of all, sure, you're one Terry. of the best math teachers, one of the best math teachers in the county, and what a sad loss you will be to this county. The, another thing I want to say is that Pre uh, Superintendent Runcie said that what's going on with us not wanting to go back because of our illnesses was foolishness, quote, foolishness. I saw it twice. I, I listened to try to find any opportunity that was something else. No, he said it was a foolishness because we had bigger fish to fry if uh, we lose more students. You know what? If we're dead, we're also not there. So, and, and our students are also not there if they're dead. 
And yes, our uh, victory in the arbitration did not seem like much of a victory, but it was somewhat of a victory to us because we were being given nothing. We were being stonewalled. And now at least they must do their due diligence and provide us with what we have asked them for and help the teachers who are on ADA and do what the MOU said. So it really wasn't a loss for the union. We actually had a win. They had a little bit of a win. We had a bit of a win. So I, I don't disagree with that, but I think I don't mean that. I think I, my words didn't come across clearly. When you have a teacher who is medically critical, who is gonna end up back in school, that's not a win for the teacher. It may be a win in terms of what the union needs in, in terms of the transparency and the paperwork that, su that the uh, district has to provide and the principals have to provide. But like I said, many of them are gonna be able to substantiate that they can't do what they need to do because that's just the logistics of running the school. And Don't sometimes make it up. it's not simple. And I'm, I'm, again, I'm just saying that the teachers that are in the predicament they're in do not feel like they won. And the district's gonna lose some of them again. You know, I heard Runcie again, I love when you quote Runcie. Runcie initially at the, um, after the press hearing that John and Anna held jointly about a week and a half ago, once he had his little press conference afterwards to rebut it, and he was asked directly, how many more teachers have retired than before? And he said, oh, it was 108 last year, and now it's over 300, just a little bit more. That's triple. That's triple. And he calls that a little bit. He needs to come to my math class, for goodness sakes. You know, that's such a slap in the face to imply that that is a trivial change over what's going on. And I don't, I don't, again, I, I believe in the advocacy. I believe in the writing. I believe in the marching. I believe in everything that, that John has put out there for us to do. And I will support everybody in encouraging them to do that. But I'm telling you, when you've done it and done it and done it for year and year and year, and you don't get anything to change, it's hard sometimes. And they've, they've defeated me in terms of being able to give to Broward County Public Schools anymore. I am still going to give to kids because I have the ability to tutor on my own and I will do that. Because I know I still have a lot to offer, but Broward County is going to lose a lot of amazing people and it's, it's not going to be reacted to. They're just not going to care. And it's just really sad. Thank you so much for listening, everybody. No, thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Dory. And thank you for all the work that you've been doing for all these years. And, you know, sometimes um, if you've been for so many years fighting and feeling defeated, I can tell you that you have some stamina going on because I was already feeling super tired and upset. And just by an email that I sent that I didn't get a response from. And that was so frustrating for me. And I was like, oh my God, I don't know how much time I'm going to be into this fight until I see Nancy and I see Lindsay and I see Rocco and I see Raymond and I see Rod and I see every person that is here tonight. I just see them just keep going, keep going, keep going. And, and, you know, and, and there is, there is hope. So we, we hope that we are taking your torch on this fight and we keep going through what you already built on, which is the foundation of this work. You know, we always need a foundation for advocacy and all of you have done incredible work. And now we are just joining some other parents and I know other students that will come aboard. And, and, and so we will be here uh, for the long run. And also, you know, another thing that I wanted to mention before I move into, into Anna Marie, it's that, that, that we, we need to make sure that we understand that the school board is a place where uh, other people have control over it, the school board members. And we have, to, we have to understand that there is other people within the school district that they're doing a lot of things. Like you said, Sarah feels like numb already or like Hickson feels numb already. There is people that are talking to them and they making them feel comfortable, but at the end of the day, they're not going to do the best for our teachers and for our students. Uh, meaning the people in the district. So 
it's not them. I think that they feel that they have their hands tied because they don't know how to play on this sandbox yet. They don't got any orientation. Superintendent didn't meet with them for hours to tell them what to do, how to introduce an item into the school board. They trying to learn with all this and, and, and we have to be there for them to tell them that they could do it. Uh, and I hope that is the case with these two uh, school board members. Um, okay, anyways, I'm gonna stop talking. Uh, Anna Marie, you're next. You're on mute. You are on mute. And we have Leslie I'm, Binder I'm, after, and then after that, Raymond again. Okay, I just wanted to let you know that I am putting to me a very classic um, Mr. Runcie's not being honest with people um, message here. Uh, if you look at btuonline.com, the EP contract in Article 24, Article, I, I'm not a, I'm a teacher, not a speller. I teach people how to spell. I don't do it well myself. So <laughs> I'm just going to put that out there. Um, in his, in, in the, in the BTU contract, it states the arbitrator Sustain, sustains the position of the grievant. The fees are and expenses of the arbitrator shall be paid by the district. So if the arbitrator says the district won, the district pays. However, if the arbitrator sustains the district position, all fees and expenses shall be paid by the grievant by BTU. Neither of those things happen. So technically this past weekend, the arbitrator came up with nobody won. He did a split and the way we know that is if you know nothing, he sent his bill 50% to BTU and 50% to the district. If the district had won, which is what Superintendent Runcie got on the news and stated, blatantly stated, then he would not be paying a dime BTU would have had the full bill. We did not get the full bill at BTU. It's a lie. No one won. It was a split decision. D just if you do nothing else and you look at just how the contract works, this past weekend when the arbitrator made his decision on Monday, and Superintendent Runcie got in the media cycle and said, oh, we won, we won, our teachers have to go back. We won, we won, our teachers. No, we paid half and we were told to sit down with the union and discuss it again. That's not as grand and glorious, so that didn't make the news cycle. You want to know where the winner is? check to see who's paying the bill. I love that. Thank you, Henry. The great point, another another tool <laughs> to use when people said- Everything is this. about the money. <laughs> right, everything is about the money. Um, all right, so we're gonna move into Leslie Binder and then we have Raymond. And then after Raymond, we're going to close comments if there is no more, if somebody else wants to speak, this is your last call. Um, and then we're going to have, Nancy is going to show us, we're gonna to talk to us about the, the video that we want to do uh, to provide the board with our stories. So, um, Leslie, welcome. Hi, my last name is Bender. Just Oh, sorry, sorry, got it, Bender. Um, so it's just an interesting, uh, I guess, words to say, um, I know that Superintendent Runcie said win-win, and to be honest, I think it's a complete loss for my students because A, their par the parents told me themselves and my principal told me that they started a petition. And um, I know that they 
messaged uh, or sent an email to the school board. My principal told me that he was being called from everywhere, yet nothing was actually done to help their kids. It's not really about like saving my job or, or it's about their kids. And I am very sad. I don't mean to cry, but like, I'm very sad. I miss them and I know they miss me and they're with a substitute and I took a leave. So, you know, unfortunately it's, there's no win-win for anybody. And um, I just think that that's an interesting way that, that it's um, spoken in that way by the superintendent, because that's clearly not the case. A win-win for, I don't know who, but the students for sure are not. Definitely. They are the ones that are suffering the most. No, they really are. Like that is, that's a fact. Um, I, 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 you know, obviously I see what, you know, I, I can see what's going on. And I just, I'm, I'm, I'm confused when children got lost in the shuffle here. Yeah, I agree. I don't want to start because then they tell me to be quiet. So I'm going to, I'm not going to comment on that. Uh, but I completely agree with you. Um, we have- I, Go ahead, go sorry. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, listen. No, I, I just said, um, Dory had made a comment also just about like not feeling so secure that um, the information that principals would produce would be reflective of what the their current situations are. And I can tell you that for me at my school, my principal said you could teach a class on, uh, of all at-home learners but not at home. You would have to report to the building. And that to me was not, that that wasn't the situation that I wanted to get involved with. So I take, I applied for the leave before, right when we were told that um, we wouldn't be able to, or the, that the extension couldn't happen. I put in for the leave, um, you know, hoping though that perhaps everything with the arbitration would have helped my situation if I could stay remote. But the bottom line is, is that it didn't and I am on leave. And um, I don't know, the whole thing is just such a shame. I've never spoken at any of these meetings before, but I, I have attended them. And um, I'm not one for public speaking, but I do feel like parents were, you know, my, my students' parents were really putting themselves out there and nobody really did listen. Sorry. And for, and Leslie, thank you for sharing. So I know how hard it is to share when you have all this, um, um, all these feelings. So um, we appreciate you are being vulnerable and then you're sharing with us tonight. That is the purpose of this meeting also to hear you and to really get into understand what is happening. Cause people is like, they hear us when we talk with or we sent an email, but they're like, what are you talking about? Everyone is fine. Teachers are fine. Everyone is okay. Students are okay. They gave their education. Some of them are failing. So they're going to come back to school. And, and it's not that easy. And it's not that easy. We are putting our personal interests and money before our health. And but that is not new. It's been happening with COVID. Um, Governor DeSantis, decided that money comes first, business comes first before health. And that's why we've been having all these cases in Florida. But, but we hear you and that is the most important part. We are hearing you and, and we, are, we are here to, to be that voice for you, Leslie. So again, uh, email any of us. Rod put his email. Nancy put his email. Lindsay, I think, to Raymond, Rocco, myself. We're here to to email us, copy us, whatever, whoever you feel more comfortable about it. But but we are we are with you, and um, I'm you know every every time that we get out of these meetings, it's just it's hard to hear everyone. So thank you for the courage, and thank, thank you for sharing. We appreciate it. Appreciate it. Awesome. Um, Raymond. Well, first of all, Miss Binder and, and Miss Dory too. I, there's no reason teachers like Miss Dory should be retiring. She shouldn't feel burnt out. 
there's no reason why teachers like Miss Binder should be so moved to, to, to even go to that extent to express herself. But I just wanted to follow up on a point that she made. I don't want us to normalize the status quo. In no means, in no means whatsoever was the arbitration hearing a win-win for anybody. Transparency is not enough. It's a step. It's what we are, it's what we are required to have as tax paying citizens, but it's not a win-win situation because when teachers do have to come back, risk their lives and, and or risk their livelihoods, still, that's not a win-win in my book. So teachers don't treat it as such. We got to keep fighting. That's number one. Number two, um, I, I just wanted to say uh, to, to people like Ms. Dory and Ms. Binder, thank you so much for your hard work and dedication to this district. And I know you're burnt out and I, I know you feel heavy burden, but I, I want you to know that I'm here to pick up your slack. Um, I'm here to pick up what you can no longer carry. And for the rest of my life, I will remember these stories and it will carry me it will carry me so very far in my advocacy. So I just wanna let you know that I hear you. Um, I'm gonna keep working for you. And please, please, please let me know whatever I can do to help you. Uh, Ms. Pierpoint as well, um, Ms. Terry, Vice President of the BTU, let me know what I can do to assist you. Cause like, 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 like the Vice President said, uh, Vice President Terry, by the way, um, like she said, we're all in this fight together. And when we continue to apply the pressure, then they move. We've seen that countless times in history. We can't give up now. We've come way too far. And if we continue to move forward and we continue to act and just do basic human acts and, and services, um, we'll get so far. So let's continue not to, 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 to sell ourselves short Let's remember that we're human and let's not take this arbitration decision as a win-win. It's not a win-win. It's a lose-lose for teachers. This school board is playing a zero-sum game where some must fail for others to win. We can't do that, especially with teachers' lives. And this is my last point, I promise. If teachers are gone, then there is no education, period. If teachers are dying, then the quality of education that Superintendent Runty talks about is non-existent and we need to get it together. Let's keep pushing forward. I love everybody here. Thank you, thank you. Yep, yeah, Raymond. And um, and one, one thing before we go to Terry and then I noticed that uh, a school board member Leonardi just joined. Uh, we are about to wrap up. Uh, Sarah, but I know you want maybe just to um, share some thoughts. Um, one of the things that I heard the superintendent mention in, um, in, in his last comments or press, press conference was about the Chicago public schools, that they were going back into schools and that everything was fine. They already opened, that they opened before us because uh, we brag about being the last ones to open in Florida and all these things. But I want you to, to do, I did an exercise today. It was like looking around the nation and Chicago is in a big mess. I don't know if you guys heard, there's a strike. Teachers are not going back into the classrooms. They call it a strike. The, the union, it's in a big fight against that. Um, if you look into New York, uh, which is where I, you know, my, my, my I, I'm a transplant from there. So I read a lot of what happens in New York you can see that they at least have an option of hybrid education where your son could go into school certain days and then your son stays at home certain days if you want to do that. If not, you have full online, full online. If you have full in person, full in person. But the, the of course the system there is different because it's major control, but the, the chancellor of education is giving reports to the public on television every week about what is happening, how they're moving forward. Of course, everyone is gonna have, you know, comments or conclusions, but there is transparency at least, or there is communication at least. 
And I think that that is what we need as a community. We need transparency, we need information, we need fidelity on what they share. And again, I've been waiting 24 days today for a public record, 24 days and counting because I don't think I'm gonna get it. Well, other people get public records in, in, in a day just because they hold a batch of a newspaper or a TV channel or a union. And you know, with all due respect, I'm a parent. I'm also part of the system. I should be getting that report in less than 48 hours, which that, that's what they promise, I guess. Um, so keep pushing, keep doing the work. I'm gonna open the mic for Terry. Terry, if you could be brief, and then we're gonna give the mic to Ms. Leonardi, and then we're gonna wrap up uh, with Nancy talking about our video um, so we could resume the meeting. I mean, we could adjourn the meeting and we could all go to sleep. Hopefully we could go to sleep peacefully <laughs> after all this tonight. But Thank you for giving me another moment. I do appreciate it. I know you mentioned um, Representative Leonardi was on the call, but I neglected to, um, to say that Representative um, Nora, Nora Rupert was also on the call. So my apologies. But one of the things that I just wanted to bring out because I go school to school with President Fusco and she has said to principals, if you can't schedule it so that our most in need teachers can stay remote, I will come and do your scheduling and I'll show you how you can do it. Now, I know that principals don't want to take that in a very kind way, but I truly believe that she would be able to do it and do it for multiple schools. And it's like, we're a team. Why don't we start finding the solutions that are inside of every problem instead of shutting the door on the problem and saying, it's just easier to be stubborn and to say, this is how it's going to be. Because teachers will die. Students will die. We are looking into that. There is no way around it. And this must be a group effort. It has to be. And if President Fusco can get in there and help, please let her. Because I've had principals who say when we show up at the school, okay, all of my teachers are going to stay remote. I figured it out. So if one principal can figure it out and 10 principals can figure it out and 20 can, why can't they all? I believe that many of them can, and I hope that they will. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. And again, <clears throat> uh, we've been, um, I know Christine Campbell is talking about the custodials. And I actually, I, I have someone from the community who's been emailing me for the couple, a couple of days. She's doing all the research about the unions, um, not just the BTU, but also talking about the custodials. Um, I wanted to ask uh, Anna, but she didn't uh, attend our meeting tonight about that specifically. I know Rod, I know you've been involved in Anna Marie and the rest, even Terry about the custodials union. Uh, we could talk about that, but also they part of the system. Um, I don't know if the bus drivers have a union or a group. Um, we should talk to them as well. We should bring them into the conversation as well. Um, of course, we want to be inclusive with all the groups that are being exposed at this point. Um, uh, yes, it's called FOPE, but that's the same thing I heard, but I don't know if they really, they send me a lot of information. I could assure you that it's not as easy and, and, and it's a little complex, uh, but we will dig into it um, for the people who's asking on the chat about that. Um, uh, Ms. Leonardi, are you there? Both drivers do have a union? Okay, right. We could talk offline about that. Welcome, and I'm, I'm sorry, I know that you had something else and we appreciate that you are joining. Uh, we are about to finish. Um, we went a different, a little different this time. We got testimonials that we went, so for you to know, we went over the website for the school board. We got to uh, show the community how to do the public comment, how to reach out to all the school board members, how to do, how to check the dashboard for COVID, um, so we did a little bit of an educational piece in the middle of our meeting, then we just finished our second part, which was the testimonials, and then we're going to wrap up with something that we thought <laughs> with Nancy will be great for us to advocate for our teachers, so she's going to present at the end. But welcome, and, and we are here to listen as well to you. Thank you. Thank you, and I'm, I apologize for being late. Um, I've been in meetings and visiting schools all day. Um, I do serve on the board of a club here in the northern part of Broward, so I was on that meeting for the last two hours. 
Um, and I believe the last community meetings uh, you guys had, I was at open houses, virtual open houses for schools in my district. So thank you for having me. Um, I did want to come and show my support tonight. Um, you know, I was told that some things were said about me being numb and uh, not caring about teachers, and that's absolutely not the case. I have been responding to every single email that I've gotten. Um, I have been on the phone with superintendent and staff um, trying to make sure that we get as many of these remote work assignments granted as possible. Um, yeah, I've been fighting and advocating and maybe it's not on a Zoom meeting uh, all the time, but I do wanna make sure that you guys know that you're not alone and you do have people who care about you um, I am a teacher. I am going to be subbing up in Palm Beach County pretty soon here. Um, so I know, you know, what you guys are going through and I care and I will fight for you. Um, I'm going to put my cell phone and my email address in the chat. Um, and again, I am not numb. Uh, I care very much about the people who, uh, you know, go into our schools and the, the things that you are going through. Um, so again, I will put my email address and phone number in the chat. Um, and please know that I care and that I'm fighting for you. Thank you, Sarah. And, and, and so for everyone who, um, you know, we heard some of those comments and, and you know, I think everyone is entitled to, to think, um, you know, the way that they want. But um, we know Sarah has been a fighter since the first day. She was maybe the first person that got back to me after the first meeting when we had 100 people. She was here with Ms. Hickson. Uh, and again, as I mentioned to, to many of you tonight, um, I think Ms. Leonardi and Ms. Hickson are fighting without having the tools yet to fight because they didn't get any introduction to the school board. Um, and, and it's hard, even you know when you change jobs, imagine how hard it is to just, you, they don't give you an orientation, they don't give you a laptop and not even give you an email. And then you're just like trying to fight or trying to get your, your job done. So. We know, Ms. Donardi, you are doing your best with what you are uh, doing right now at the school board and, and Ms. Hickson as well. Um, but, you know, we have comments here, passion people sharing. So, um, uh, you know, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a safe space. Uh, I know, Andrew, uh, we, we were about to wrap up, but I know you are with the Congresswoman. Uh, so do you want to share something really quick? And then I have Ellie. Really, really quick, guys, because uh, we went extremely late today, and I want to be respectful of our teachers. They have to wake up early, and our parents. Uh, Andrew? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. Um, and, and thank you so much to all of you who came on tonight, who, who spoke your feelings and, and told us about the situations in your schools uh, with your students, uh, your experience as teachers. Um, I personally come from a, a long line of teachers. Uh, my sister and my mother are both teachers who were forced back into the classroom despite various issues. And it's tough. And, and I certainly feel that. Um, and it, it's great that we can come together and have this forum. Um, I do want to give a, a quick shout out to Sarah Leonardi and also to Debbie Hickson. Um, the two of them came in this year as newly elected school board members. And it's not that they um, I think didn't have the tools to, to advocate and to make an impact because they have made an impact already. Um, I've worked with both of them and, and with some of the other school board members um, and they're doing an immense amount of work behind the scenes. Um, it's not just what you see uh, in the news. It's not just what you see as reports from the school board. Um, there really is a lot going on back there. And I really wanna thank Sarah for stepping up and doing a lot of that work. It is a thankless job in a lot of cases cases, um, but we do have uh, uh, some really great school board members out there fighting for us. And we all just have to do everything that we can to keep advocating, to make sure we're working with our school board members, our state representatives, our members of Congress even, and, and that's why I'm happy to be here. Um, and keep everyone safe, keep everyone going in the right direction because we're only going to get through this if we all work together. So thank you all so much for, for welcoming me tonight, uh, welcoming Vivian, and we'll be, we'll be sure to keep in touch. Thank you, Andrew. Um, okay, there was someone else. I think it was Ellie. We still have a minute if you want to share. Thank you. Um, I'm the one who's been reaching out and trying to figure out what's going on with the Union for the Custodians. Um, 
I've been working with another person. They called for an application for a campus monitor. And the person who answered the phone was very rude to them, even when asking for a application for somebody to join. Then they were told that every two months they have a selection committee to see who they're gonna accept and who they're gonna deny. I don't know how that is a union. I'm trying to figure out what the legal definition of a, of a union is because that sounds more like a private club to me than it does a union. The I can tell you FOPI vets their membership much more um, tightly with more um, with more need for finding the person they do not need to represent or do not care to represent. I, I don't want to be not politically correct. BTU, uh, we ask everyone in our collective bargaining unit to join our group. FOPI takes your interest form and then we'll do a background check and they don't want people who are going to be possible legal problems or cost the membership money. And they do vet and interview and limit the people who can join their union. That, that is a, a difference. The FOPI is a union, BTU is a union, the PBAA, the Principals Association, is an organization of professionals. It's not a union. And COPA, the Confidential Secretaries, are a union. We have facilities leaving hope because they don't feel they're protected. They don't feel they're protected. And when you join FOPI, you are a um, you are a you're not a full member for the first three months. They they want you on a probationary period because if if you're going to have problems, they they don't want those problems to look badly on their unit. Well, they don't have all the PPE at the schools. And they're not going to speak out because they're scared because Fopi's not going to protect them. They need to call Dan Reynolds or Jim Silvernail the, or the um, AFL-CIO, which is their parent union. Okay. Thank you for that. And they meet on the third Thursday in Plantation every month at the CLC, Central Labor Council. Are their meetings open to their you members? You cannot vote if you're not a member, but you can attend. Can the public attend also? I've never been turned away. OK. Thank you for that information. Awesome. All right. Uh, all right. So we are closing with uh, Nancy Fry um, taking us to the end with the video idea we wanted to bring up uh, to all of you today. Nancy. Great. Hi, everyone. And thank you so much, Sarah, again, for showing up. That, that really means a lot that after getting through a very long meeting, you'd show up to another one. So we really appreciate that. And um, so we've been trying to basically gather as many stories from people as possible. We've recorded every one of these meetings, We're recording this one tonight. We've recorded um, the last two. And we're just trying to get everyone's stories. It's hard when there's such a short amount of time for public comment. Uh, it's hard getting all of this out there. So what I wanna do is aggregate everyone's stories into a video that then we can share with the school board, we can share with the public so everyone knows what's going on. And uh, so we're asking everybody 
to, uh, if possible, if you have a story you want to share, what your personal experience is, uh, send me a video. I'll again put my uh, email in the chat afterwards, just 30 seconds, one minute, no longer than a minute and a half. Uh, just say what your particular story or concern is, and I want to aggregate them all together so everything's in one place. And we'll take these testimonials we've had from our other meetings, we'll take uh, what you send me, and we'll just put it all together. Um, uh, if if you're skilled with the with the cell phone video, make sure it's horizontal because that's the easiest way for me to stitch everything together with anything I'm pulling from Zoom. And um, let's just get your stories out there, make sure that your voice is being heard and um, just let's get everyone onto one big platform so that it's easier to disseminate all of this information together for anyone that needs to hear it. Great, awesome, Nancy. And again, we will be sharing this with, um, with all of you when we finish. Of course, we want to make sure that you send the files. Uh, how many seconds did you said, Nancy? Um, anything from 30 seconds to a minute and a half would probably be sufficient, depending on how much you have to say. Right. So let's try to be concise, short. We want to share this with the school board members and the superintendent and the public. Um, so we will have something for all of you. Um, I want to, again, making sure that as uh, Sarah just joins our meeting, that she share her email and her phone number. Um, I don't recall who made comments about the board members that were not here today. Um, you should be reaching out to her uh, through email or through the phone if you feel that maybe she wants to hear your voice. Um, that, I think that is the way that you should reach out to your school board members. Uh, I want to make sure that there was comments made here that maybe where, uh, where, where things were hit up when we were talking about mobilizing people and getting the school board to do stuff. And somebody mentioned Ms. Leonardi's uh, name and I, I encouraged that person to send her an email and clear the air uh, with, with the school board member if you feel strong about your position. She shared her phone number and her email. Um, but you know this was recorded again, so it will be up there in the public. So whoever did mention anything and you guys need to square your differences, I think the best way is by emailing each other or calling each other. So um, again, we appreciate everyone who came today to the meeting. I don't know if anyone, uh, Nancy or Lindsay, have anything to say to wrap up. If not, then we're gonna just, uh, finish. Uh, this meeting will be recorded again and will be on YouTube tomorrow or tonight. So uh, look up for the link. We will be sending it tomorrow via email. Everyone is good. I just want to thank everybody that's left on here for showing up. Um, like we know it's hard with, with so many meetings and just I really appreciate everybody that's coming in and taking an interest in this and, and caring enough to, to show up. Awesome. I just wanted to thank everyone for coming. Um, as a parent, I'm here to support teachers any way that I can. Um, my keyboard's not working to type my email in the chat, but you can find me on Facebook or ask John or Nancy for my email and they can give it to you. But any way that I can help advocate for you, I'm here and I'm happy to do so. Um, I see my son's amazing teacher here. Hi, Miss Valentine. And I'm just grateful for teachers for everything that you guys do for our kids. And we're here to support you any way we can. Awesome. Thank you guys. Have a good, have a good night. Thank you. Ciao. Night. Bye. Good night, everybody. Good night, Be safe. Be safe. You too. Hey, Terry, it looks like you're home. Oh, shit, you can see me? Well, I- Are my camera on? <laughs> I, your camera's not on, but no, I- No, I can't. <laughs>
Ay, 